So write what you want. Write its natural length and then look at what you did. Did you tell a story? Did you go into the character development? Or did you start world building? And then you'll know whether you really have a novella or a... Uh, you know, one of the reasons why Philip K. Dick's stories have been so often adapted was Dick was one of the few authors in the, who wrote short stories, but he wrote them at the novella length. And novellas uh, are good because at that length you do do the character development. So when Hollywood's wanted to adapt his stories, they had characters that they could write up as characters in the script. On the other hand, one of the problems is it's really hard to adapt a novel because there's too much information in a novel. And a short story isn't long enough, generally, to make a script. So the novella for Hollywood is the best length in terms of word length and character development. However, it's the sh hardest length short fiction to sell. 40,000 words is a hard length to find a place in a, in a publication. Dick, who was a great writer but had the you know, business sense of an avocado, <laughs> kept trying to write at that length. That's why he died poor and you know, I think right now, young. But I think Analog is the only place that's buying them right now. Yeah. I know that uh, Analog and Absolute Magnitude, back when I had Absolute Magnitude, were the only two. So we were the only games in town. If you didn't sell to us, you were stuck. So the point is, look at what you did, and if you just told the story, it should be a short story, regardless of the length. If you did some intelligent, interesting character development, you might have a novella. If you did world building and it's long, then it probably should be that length. That, I mean, that's my attitude. One you, comment, if I could just address one of those, is um, watch out what you're fleshing out. Because that tends to be a lot of, uh, you know, you may think that you're adding complexity or depth to the character or the scene or whatever it is, but what you could be doing is masking that with um, backstory. And the reader doesn't need to know everything you as the author need to think through the backstory and is this consistent with the character and what could be happening, but the reader doesn't need to know that. They just need to know that it's logically, um, they need only the most uh, uh, sensitive extreme information. They don't need everything that's been developed. So that could also affect your pacing, depending on like what you're trying to flesh out. There are certain cultural assumptions that you can work on. For instance, if somebody was a young man between 18 and 22 in the 19, early 1940s, you can assume he was in World War II. You don't have to mention that. You would have to mention that for some reason he wasn't in World War II. But if that person is of that age, that's just a given. It's just like if you were a young person of that age in the 1960s, you knew what Vietnam was. You'd have to mention if some, for some reason somebody didn't know what Vietnam was or didn't understand the national turmoil going on. See, there's a lot of stuff that you can just assume. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, um, how do you, basically, I guess, too many of my stories, I almost can think that I'm writing closer to a movie script. In other words, even there's so much dialogue that I'm even starting to notice that I've got a lot of dialogue with minimal description wrapping around it. And yet I'm also not seeing where to start putting in a lot of description that isn't just but description almost for description. Well, there's nothing wrong with writing short story, story dialogue. I need a lot of description. Now, I will say this. I see a lot of short stories that I do think read more like scripts because there's no inner dialogue. I was like, you know, I wrote back to one writer and said, you know, this isn't bad, but none of your characters thought. It's, it's 20 pages without a single thought, just words being spoken. And he sent it back to me, and there still weren't any thoughts. <laughs> yeah. But there's nothing intrinsically wrong in writing all dialogue. The first the story I told Asimov's was a monologue. It's not even a dialogue. And many, many authors can write stories, you know, with all dialogue. Terry Bisson did one, one of the better known examples called They're Made of Meat. And uh, you can do it all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. You can get out all the, if you can get out all the exposition you need and storytelling and plotting and still include it all in dialogue. That's, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with that. What you're talking about is getting in scene directions, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's. And no, one of the problems that one of the problems that scripts have, as opposed to short stories, is yeah, you can't. See, this, a movie can't do the internal dialogue. Yeah. Or uh, directors consider it very annoying those voiceovers, you know. Yeah. I think all movie voiceovers sound like Al Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> Dune sounded like Al Pacino. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I'm wondering on plotting and, and that sort of thing. I mean, I've, I've often been told that you, before you start writing a short story, you should have the plot all, you know, scene by scene knocked out. I mean, at least that's what I've been told. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if, you know, in your experience of writing, um, 
whether you, when you sit down, you already know A, B, C, D, E, F, or you just kind of sit down and start going? The stories come to me in lots of different ways. Sometimes I have the plot first, and then I develop characters. Other times I have the character first. And in the case of them, I've just got the first slot, and I just go with it and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. I don't, you don't have to have all of that. I mean, it's a common observation. There's two kinds of writers, the pantsers and the plotters, the, the outliners. When I started, I thought I had to outline my stories, and I'd write it down, and so this is what's happening. I'm sitting at the keyboard, I'm going, am I following my outline? You know, <laughs> it's like the centipede, you know, the old joke, the centipede, when somebody asked him, how do you know how to walk, and he thought about it, he couldn't walk anymore. <laughs> remember how he walked his feet? So I said, I guess I'm a pantser. Now, the funny thing is, you'll start one place, and then you may end up in a totally different place. You have, like, where did that go, you know? But, I mean, if it still works out okay, that's just a tribute to your creativity. And, and don't underestimate how much is going on unconsciously or subconsciously. Yeah, Sometimes absolutely. stuff just spills out because you actually, your mind is thinking it out and you finally spill it out on the keyboard and, and it works. So uh, it depends on your style. There are people who outline fastidiously. Yeah. And if that works for you and you can work with that, fine. But if you want to pants it, fly by the seat of your pants, go for it. That's, that's what works for me. I'm a much faster writer when I outline. I'm a much happier writer when I don't. <laughs> and I don't think that you need to do one extreme or the other. I kind of blend. I, do, I hit bullet points. This is kind of the way I'd like to see the, okay, the way I'd like to see the story progress as the author. But when my characters are driving, it doesn't always follow my point. And, you know, you're thinking about your characters. You're trying to get in their heads. You're trying to do what they would do. Think, how, what would they be seeing? What would they be feeling? That kind of thing. They're not going to say what you think they're going to say. They're going to say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of strange because, you know, when you're, when their creativity kicks in or your muse or whatever you want to call it, um, what's in your bullet points may not end up in your story. It's just the map that you kind of laid out at the beginning. You, you, I mean, I have found that if I have a story idea and I've been thinking about it, I may it may lay there in, in the, what's the expression I heard, well, your, your deep well of unconscious cerebration for years, and then someday you're in the shower and all of a sudden you think of the solution to a plot point you couldn't figure out, and you're finally able to write the story. My story, Great White Ship, I had on my mind for so long, I wasn't obsessing, but the idea was there, except I couldn't figure out how to end it for so long that I occasionally forget that I, I've written it. You know, it's like someday I'll, I sit down at my keyboard and go, maybe it's time to sit down and write that dirigible. St oh shit, I did write that story. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I did finally get around to it. But um, one time I was trying to think of, I, I wanted to write a clever story where spam actually secretly stands for something. <laughs> it's actually an acronym, uh, but nobody knows what it is, and that makes it a secret history. And I'm driving to Dallas with my wife, and I thought of something. And I said, grab a piece of paper and a pen, write down this, you know, write this down. She said, okay. You know, and it was, what was it, server, protocol, alternate, something. I, I came up with some abbreviation. And that was a story that I submitted to Gardner Dozois that actually got my first rejection letter with feedback from. Where he, he wrote on it, you know, this is better than 95% of the stuff in my slush pile. It was when I, it looked like I could actually sell him something. So I was driving down the road. Now today, you, you, I don't know, I guess you can talk on the cell phone, but this was like 2003. And uh, so my wife jotted down, you know, S P P A N. Siri, take a note. Huh? Siri, take a note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh no. I was driving a 1983 Buick Delta 88, Oldsmobile Delta 88, you know. That thing barely, uh, you know. Okay, now I wouldn't even have, with, with, uh, with my Highlander, I don't actually even, I just can push a button on my, on my, uh, driver um, on the wheel and say, Siri, take a note, and it's tied in Bluetooth to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I use uh, Dragon, Dragon voice recognition software, and uh, I've got to watch it, because my wife walks in the room, and I turn around and start talking to her, the stupid thing is taking down right the phone. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'll turn around, you know, I'll see something like, no, Millie, I'll let you outside when I have time, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't stop. I, you need a bathroom break, I turn around, and it's all written down. <laughs> Editing. Yeah. Yeah, I have found out if I clear my throat, it's the equivalent of it is in the program. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like God. <laughs> oh, yeah. you if you're approaching it from, say, word length, say you're writing a short story that's 2,500 words versus something that's going to be 
five thousand.